Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 54, Azure Product Purchasing Options. My name is Tim Warner. Today's skill in the AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain, begins with the functional group Describe Azure Pricing, Service Level Agreements and Life Cycles, passes into the objective Describe Planning and Management of Costs. Our specific skill here is actually twofold. First, describe options for purchasing Azure products and services, and second, describe options around the Azure Free Account. As usual, you can see an interactive table of contents at timw.info forward slash az900sg. Let's begin. How to buy Azure. There's two main ways to buy Azure. One is to purchase your subscription directly from Microsoft, either through the Azure website or through your Microsoft representative. And you'd want to go that route in particular if you're interested in the EA or Enterprise Agreement. We talked about these different subscription offers in the previous lesson, by the way. Make sure to catch that if you haven't done so already. Second way to buy Azure is through a Microsoft Cloud Solution Partner or CSP. A CSP stands as a proxy basically between you and Microsoft, you're actually paying the CSP for your billing and not Microsoft directly. A CSP is specifically a Microsoft partner organization that has undertaken additional training and met different requirements to earn the cloud solution provider credential. CSPs can often provide additional value besides just being a payment method for your Azure resources. CSPs can actually help you with architecture, implementation, and troubleshooting as well. The Microsoft Free Account is how you start your Azure journey. The Free Account offer is available only to new Azure customers, and one of the things that you do when you fill out the form for your Free Account is provide a payment method. This has to be a legitimate credit card and not a prepaid card, and Microsoft uses this not as a payment method initially, but as an identity validation to prevent abuse, that is, to prevent somebody from attempting to register multiple free accounts. The free account gives you $200 in US dollars to spend on any Azure service over 30 days. Now, if by day 31 you still have money left over, it goes down the tubes. If you've spent the 200 USD by day 15, let's say, then you're finished with the credit. You then have a decision to make. First of all, the free subscription does not automatically convert to a paid offer like pay as you go. You as a user have to flip that switch manually, and I think that's a good thing. That gives you some assurance that you won't wind up with a surprise charge at the end of the pay period. You should also know that when you flip the switch to pay G, some services will remain free for 12 months and others are always free. I'll illustrate that in our demo. Let's take a look in this brief demo at the Azure free account. Things start here at the Azure homepage, azure.com, and you'll see a big old button here to start free. If your business is interested in Azure, you're going to need to create a free account to get started. This is the ultimate front door into any Azure subscription. And what happens when you start down this path, you're required to sign in with a Microsoft account identity. If you've already redeemed the free account, you'll see a message that looks like the screen here. It looks like you already have an account. It's only available to new users one per customer. But we do have a link here to sign up for a Pagey subscription or to use an existing subscription with our current account. Let's imagine for a moment that I was coming into this fresh as a new user. Let me go to a new in private window and let's go to azure.com. We'll come down to start free, hit start free again. And if we don't have a Microsoft account, we'll be prompted to create one. I'm going to sign in with one of my alternate Microsoft accounts, provide the password here. And I'm not going to complete this entire form, but instead, let me just show you the basic workflow. You've got identity verification, both by phone and by credit card. And then you affirm the Azure license agreement. And at the end of this process, you'll be taken into your free subscription. And that subscription will trust a brand new Azure Active Directory tenant that normally has the label default directory. Let me now shift over into the Azure portal with my normal administrator account. You can search in the global navigation bar for free services, and you can come to this blade. This is a good place to see exactly which services are available for free for 12 months. As you can see, you can run 750 hours each of a Windows server and Linux virtual machine. Of course, those are small sizes. The idea with the Azure free account is that this is not meant to be a platform to give you production services. 
services for free. Instead, it's a platform to give you an ability to test Azure and determine whether it's right for your production workloads. But like I said, this shows the 12 months free services. And then farther down in the list, we have always free services. And it's true that I do have some customers in my small consulting practice who use, for instance, Azure Functions here at the free tier in their production environment. As you can see, you get 1 million executions per month for free, which is really generous. On the other hand, again, when you're dealing with free services, it's at normally at the lowest level of performance. So your functions are going to be running a lot slower than they would if you were using a normal paid method. Learning resources first to create your free Azure account, go to timw.info forward slash FRE1. To read the Azure free account frequently asked questions list, go to timw.info forward slash FRE2. And go to Microsoft Learn. They have a module on this very subject. Go to timw.info forward slash FRE3. Slowly but surely, we're getting near to the end of this series. Our next episode is called Azure Cost Factors. In the meantime, please consider subscribing not only to this YouTube channel, but also my Twitter feed at Tech Trainer Tim. My long-form Pluralsight courses are at timw.info forward slash ps. My website is techtrainertim.com. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.